Okay, so I've been playing with these kind of versions of my sketch. And seeing what aspects are helpful. And I'm noticing a few things. So one thing I'm noticing is that I like the hand with a little bit more thickness around it, right? So I'm going to remember that for when I go into Illustrator. And these outside shapes, I think I want these to be black shapes. So let me try that quickly. I'm going to isolate them on their own. These ones that are split away from the globe itself. I don't think I actually need an outline around the globe at all. But I want these to be filled in instead of just outlined. You know, to show kind of the teetering. So I'm just going to clean up those shapes. And so even though I'm using kind of existing symbols and compositing between them, kind of mashing them up with my own idea, right? And I'll be modifying them more in, um, in Illustrator as I go. There we go. Yes. Ah. What I'm doing is trying to get the, the most out of my design. And I can use a lot of repetition. That's where compositing comes in. So if I want these kind of teetering lines on the hand as well, I can put those in. Kind of figure out their right placement. Okay, so now what's interesting is I actually don't need the white at all here. So I'm going to play with the levels and exaggerate the highlights a little. Because we're, what we're looking for is just black shapes black cutout shapes okay so now I'm gonna flatten this whole thing just layer flatten I can I can um, cut it down and now I want to play between these two elements that are pretty basic now. And really try to pay attention to their proportion. Right? And in design, what's called their proximity. And if you need a central line, your guide will lock to the center generally of your image and that can help with your layout and then you can always make a duplicate right What can I use? Oh, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to use the navigator here to see if it reads small. Not quite yet. And so now I'm going to play with some of the difficulties. I've isolated the hand on its own layer. 
going to go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm going to add this stroke around it. So I do that by double clicking on that layer. I've already erased the background from it. And I can add a stroke. And I can play with the size of that stroke to help me simplify it. And I want it, I think, at least that thick. It shows me the little stray pixels I still need to delete. And this is pretty close to what I can now bring into Illustrator. Now, Illustrator allows you to modify every aspect of it. So we will get there. But this gives me a good approach to what my idea is for this graphic symbol. And now it works better small. You see, that's fully readable, though maybe a little fussy in some areas. Whereas without the stroke, it loses its definition. You know, it becomes weaker. And I think some of these are going to get filled in with black as well. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm just going to save that as a JPEG onto the desktop. Just a regular, you know, black and white JPEG image. Doesn't matter if it's color mode or grayscale. That's my sketch. And honestly, it doesn't matter how you get to your refined sketch, but what you will upload, you go back in my history here, you will upload your sketch, whether it's a refined sketch or a really loose sketch. You know, even just these things would be fine. But I think I'll uh, save something like this as an upload for later. So I'll save this as my PSD file to the desktop. OK, now I get to close Photoshop. And we get to work with our sketch, and we are going to open it in a new program. So we right click and we say open with Adobe Illustrator. My computer's been taking a while. <laughs> I might try to open Illustrator first. There we go. Now, this is a raster file, right? Remember, raster files are made of pixels. And even though I tried to make it as cleanly black and white as possible, there are still a lot of gray pixels in there. But what Illustrator makes are vectors. And vectors have clean edges that can be perfectly smooth. They're not made of square pixels. So while that is opening up, I will show you a little video. This was created by um, a digital art student when they did the digital art second section, kind of the honors section, to help explain the difference between raster images and vector images. And I just need these programs to open. And in order to create this, he used a, an animation program. We just finished GIF animation. But this animation program uses all vectors. And it's an animation program called Flash.
So we've been doing a lot of sketching, we've been doing a lot of talking about logos. What we want to now understand is how we're going to create them with this new program. Bitmaps versus vector graphics. Bitmaps are a collection of an array of bits, which are also known as pixels. So bitmap is the old name for what we now call a raster, right? And they're still sometimes used interchangeably. But that means it's pixel based. Now, this is like the only kind of graphic you have to work with. However, there is another. Uh, vector graphics are paths which are plotted through mathematical algorithms. The method of using these algorithms was spearheaded by a man named Pierre Bessier. Pierre was a French engineer, and he had an idea. He came up with a way of using the Castel Jews algorithm. Those curves can determine means for any number of industrial applications. Here's a leading influence on how CAD and CAM machines work and how 3D models are created, and it's all the cycle. Because vectors are processed in this way, they don't store a finite number of pixels. It can be scaled to an infinite size with no pixelation. This means it can be something as small as a stamp to a package or a bottle to a poster, all the way up to the planet size billboard to do it all from the same file. So what does all of this actually mean? Why do we still use it? Isn't vector far superior to raster in every way? Well, it is and it isn't. See, vectors and bitmaps are good at different things. Vectors are good at making clean, simple shapes with usually a limited color flow. They're also perfect for images that need to be scaled, either larger or smaller. Bitmaps, on the other hand, are good at things, usually things like color shifts. The computer is not happy. Far better for sub 48 pixel designs like desktop icons. Come on. Bitmaps are also how photographs and images can be stored since it's impossible to capture an image as a vector. For example, sometimes you need a complex image. Uh, digital paintings can only work as bitmap because in a bitmap you have full control over each pixel. Vectors can only store a few pieces of information about the constants in the app. One is the stroke, the outline. The second is the fill, which is the color or the color gradient, which is placed inside the app. When you create vector graphics, you're basically accomplishing your goal by doing one of three things. Manipulate the stroke, fill, or the shape of the path itself. So you may be asking right about now, if vectors are based on algorithms, does that mean that I need to do math to use them? Well, thanks to Pierre, the answer is no. Manipulating vector shapes is easy and completely patent free. There's also brush and pencil group that can turn natural strokes into vector shapes. Also, just like in a bitmap program, you can use layers and layer groups to build vectors. But these are just the basics, so take time to experiment with these programs and learn for yourself. All right, so there's a lot in that video. All of it's accurate. All of it you will. Uh, come to recognize very quickly as we start to play in Illustrator, right? And there's obviously a lot to get introduced to. So instead of building something from scratch in Illustrator, I highly recommend that you bring in a sketch. You bring in something that you want to layer your shapes on top of, right? And simplify your shapes from. And there's a few ways to do this. So I'm going to show you the two ways. One is if I bring in my sketch, which is already intended to be a pretty clean vector shape, what I can do is simply put a piece of tracing paper over it. And the way I do that, it's still a, a pixel-based image. I'm just waiting for Illustrator to catch up here. What I can do is dim its uh, opacity, just like I would in Photoshop, to about 50%. This is called onion skinning. And then I can build my black shapes on top of that, right? And my computer still working. Let me close iTunes here. So I'm going to take this layer. And I'm simply going to go to transparency. And I'm going to take its opacity down. Because it's such a bold image, I can take it down quite far, even to only 15%, right? 
And I'm going to lock that layer in Illustrator 